to the poor in the directions of what the apostles were about. Right? And that you can see in chapter 4. Right? And it's about the couple. And what we are meditating, my friends, we are in this last days. The coming of the Lord is so soon. And we see the imminent signs are there already. Very much imminent sign. And the closest that we can come, we are seeing right now that is already super uh, aiding in the United States as well as in Europe. But the prelude of what is going to happen to all of us, that is the microchips. Right? That is something that we need to ponder because it's very clearly as spelled out in the book of Revelation. And so we're going to see that and pray that the Lord will give us the strength to go through this period of time that we will remain faithful to the Lord until death. That is a key thing, right? Let us turn to the Lord in prayer. Father, we want to pray this morning, Lord God, as we meditate your word. Father, it's not the mouth of a human man, but it's from your word, Lord God, your spirit. But anointed, Father God, and your word will be spoken. Father, we pray that you bless your word, Lord God, and pray your Holy Spirit, Lord God, be our director, our teacher, and Lord, and teach us a lesson to this morning. We pray this, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. As I mentioned, the imminent of the coming of the Lord is so close, right? Whereby today we have seen the prelude of the sign of the Antichrist or the anti the beast, the sign of the beast of 666. Right? Where today we have seen for medical reasons as well as for companies for entrance into the offices, where today you will find a little card, they hang it on your neck, you just tap it. All right, or in some places you have passwords and numbers, you just press the number in, in access. But coming in soon, right? the technology is improving very much. Whereby a chip can be placed in this in between your thumb or it could be on the side of the forehead. The reason why it is, is this chip has been backed up by a lithium battery. And this lithium battery is just like our mobile phone. When the charges get low, you charge it. But whereas this little chip that is in our hand or in our forehead, it has got its lithium battery and there is a heat has been generated on our forehead and in our foreheads. So that heat will automatically will charge that lithium battery. That particular chip is the size of a grain of a rice. That small it is. And today we are finding that companies, all right, large companies like the OCCL company, has already made mandatory that all these stuffs must have this chip in order to enter into their premises of office. So, Christians who are in OCCL companies are now in a very stalemate situation whether to receive it or not. If you don't receive it, you lose your job. Right? That is the situation. But, take heart. The scripture tells us in the book of Revelation, Wherever the mark of the beast of 666, which is a sign of this chip, it only will come upon after the rapture. Okay, the question of rapture. The rapture will take place, right? The rapture will take place first, and only after that we will be going into the seven years of tribulation, which is divided by three and a half, three and a half, or 42 months, 42 months. Whereby, in the midst of the three and a half years, this uh, sign of the beast will appear. Okay? Just let's turn to the word and we see for you. Let's turn to the book of Revelation. and let's turn to the 13th chapter. Right, and I'll read to you from verses 15 onwards. Let's just give you a little bit of understanding. Ch 13th chapter of Revelation, verse 15. And it was given to him breath to the image of the beast, so that the image of the beast would be even speak and cause as many as do not worship the image of the beast to be killed. 
and the cause of all the small and the great and the rich and the poor, the free man and the slave to be given a mark on their right hand or on their forehead. For he provides that no one will be able to buy or to sell except the one who has the mark, either the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is the wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the numbers of the beast for the number of of that man and the number is 666 which is 666 all right we see this upper loop in the second coming of the lord and before the second coming of the lord but before that something that take into consideration whereby we take heart this is where my challenges to all of us here and to fellow christians let us all turn to the book of one thessalonians One Thessalonians chapter four. Okay, I'm going to read you verse sixteen. This is rapture. You can put it in the side of your Bible. Okay, this rapture, verse sixteen. The Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. All right, when the Lord comes on the cloud, okay, that will be with the trumpet sound, with an angel, he will the trumpet sound and the first will be those who are died in the Lord. Let me qualify, yeah? those who have died in the Lord, who are kept in the paradise, will rise first. Okay, keep that in mind. They will be the first one will be taken up on the clouds. Now, three levels of heaven. The three levels of heavens are the first is the clouds and the skies. And the second is the cosmology where the stars and the moons, all right, and, the, and all the planets. And the third is the throne of God. We have seen that in 1 uh, Corinthians where Paul talks about he was caught up in the third heaven. Okay? Now, having said that, I will bring all the teachings soon to you. Now, if you see here, now look at verse 17. Then... We who are alive remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So we shall be with the Lord. That means the first who are in the Lord who have died will be taken up. The next will be all of us. Those who are in the Lord will be taken up in the twinkling of an eye. You know, in the twinkling of an eye, you know, you pinch your eyes and that's it. Where did you find that? Let's turn to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 sorry chapter 15 and hey, look at verse 51 and 52 again it's about rapture behold I tell you a mystery we will not all sleep but we will be all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will rise imperishable, and we shall be changed. This is clearly Paul's teaching about rapture. Only after this incident, after the incident of rapture, then you will find the Antichrist reign will come in, the seven years of tribulation. And that is a time you just read in the book of Revelation chapter 13. Without the mark in your hand on your forehead, you can never buy even rice. You can never buy bread. You can never buy anything without it. So there's no such thing. Uh, I churi churi, I'll put it there, but I worship Jesus in private. There's no such thing. All right, there will be no compromise in it. Whether you are in the Lord or you are not in the Lord. And that is what we are now studying. With Christ or in Christ. Now you get the point? Being with Christ. Some of us are compromising in our Christian life. We compromise in everywhere we go. Even in our workplace. We compromise. Simple reason. We take medical leave but you won't get an American. Easy way out. Let me watch. What God is watching you. Every of our actions are accounted for. All right, this is it. Whether you are in Christ or in with Christ, this is something. We have seen 
how three men who were walked with Jesus, lived with Jesus, disciples who were living with Christ, only there was an encounter, they came into Christ. One didn't. One lost his salvation. He's right now down in Hades. That's Judas Iscariot because he never repented. That's about it. And today, this morning's message is about, let's go turn then back to Acts chapter 5. Now, Acts chapter 5 is about a couple. Great sacrifice they did. A wonderful sacrifice they did. Right? What happened? The decision was arrived in chapter 4. You will read from verses 32 to 37. That at the church beginning, in the birthday of the church, there were a lot of poor people among themselves. Right? And so what happened? The apostle said, listen, those who have excess land, those who have excess money, those who have excess land of property, go and sell it and give it to the uh, apostles, and they will distribute among the poorest. Now, we need to be, be mindful. The Bible does not call you to sell your present house where you're living and give it to the poor, and you live on a street side. Never. Okay, God has provided you good homes. Stay on. God has provided you a car. Keep it on. All right? But what here was the decision was an excess property. Look at chapter 5 and verse 1. Um, but a man named Aninus and Sapphira, his wife, sold a piece of property. A piece of property. That was not their house. They had a property. They sold it and they brought the sum to the uh, apostles. But there was a problem. There was a vow being done by all the community. The whole Christians had a vow. They took a vow. That whatever that we sell, the excess one, we bring it all to the apostle feet. That was a vow that was made. That was a covenant that we made. Now keep this in mind, my friend, about our vows and covenant. And so these are the vows and covenant that have been made. Come and give the, the excess that you have to the poor. But the problem arises here. Look at verse 2. And they kept back some of the peace for him, the price of himself with his wife full knowledge bringing the portion to it and laid it at the apostles' feet. What happened this couple? They sold this particular property, but both of them conjured together, agreed together to keep some, and they gave it. Now that was where the problem arise. You vow, you vow completely. If not, you don't vow. And so what happened when they brought in there, in this very act, my friend, we can see, this is a great act of sacrifice. Huh? This couple giving away a piece of land is something great. Huh? Just like you and me, if you have a piece of land or if you have an extra house, you're selling it and coming and giving it to the church and giving it to the poor people, pastor. You know, there's a great sacrifice you can do. That's a wonderful thing. But this couple, who uh, seems to be in Christ, but they were only with Christ. Look at them, they kept some of it. Here a decision came, a vow was made, a covenant was made that we all would bring in everything and put it in the apostles' feet. But this couple decided to do, and you know what happened? This is the most dangerous thing. Now let's look at it, uh, verse 3. But Peter said to Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart? This is it, my friend. I showed you two, three uh, examples in the scripture. Luke chapter 22 verse 3. What does the word say? Satan entered into Judah's heart. Christian. Right? A man who goes, know the Lord. But the Satan entered him. First Chronicle chapter 22 verse 1. King David, a man was after God's heart. Who loved God. He was anointed by God. Satan entered into him. What was the result of these two men? One committed suicide, death. Another, by his action, what happened? King David, all the while the wars that Israel was facing, he conferred with the Lord. He went to the temple and prayed to the Lord and said, Lord, what should I do? The Lord was giving him the direction. But what happened in chapter 22 of 1 Chronicles? He decided and called his commander Joab and said, Go and count how many valiant men do I have? How many warriors do I have? And Job said, Lord, my Lord, our God has been with us in all this while, but why, my Lord, you are doing this? He said, no, I want you to go and come. God was displeased with that. Because Satan entered David. 
And when Satan entered in David, the Lord left him. Christian, a man was after God's heart, who was anointed by God as a king, who was anointed as a powerful man who can kill George, bears, he can even kill the Goliath. Such a powerful man. What happened? Satan entered him. And when Satan entered him, you know what the end result always are? Death. 70,000 people died. Read in verse 23 of First Chronicles in chapter 22. 70 people died on the account of David because Satan entered him. And the same thing now, Peter asked Aninus, why have you asked Satan to fill your heart? Friends, when Satan fills your heart, that's it. You have no longer have the Holy Spirit in you. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Your body your, is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And what must you do? And the Holy Spirit is inside you. And yet we allow Satan to feel. And that is what? He's the greatest liar. He's the greatest liar. And let me tell you this. When you allow the Satan to enter you, you've come you'll go into calamities, adversities. You will never see the blessings of God because God lives. Just like in King Saul, the Lord left him. The Lord just left him completely. You're on your own because you allowed the devil to come inside you to rule your heart. Friends, you need to guard. Your, your entire body which is the, is the temple of the Holy Spirit. You need to guard this body of us. Because it is your, the temple that the Holy Spirit dwells in your heart. And so when he allows Satan to enter you, in this incident we see three things happen. The first one, let's turn to verse 3. In verse 3 of the same chapter, chapter 5, And Peter said to Ananias, Why have Satan filled your heart and, in, uh, and lie to the Holy Spirit? That's the first thing, my friend. When Satan enters you, uh, and then you go into multiple sins. Because no longer the fear of God inside you, the Holy Spirit is inside you. And so what happened? You begin to sin, a terrible sin. And here he lied unto the Holy Spirit. Peter asked, why did you choose? Why did you choose to lie to the Holy Spirit? This is where the vow comes in, my friend. When you make a vow to God, I want you. When you make a covenant unto God, I want you to make sure you carry it out. Right? It can be anything. Alright, from ministry, not only just only a giving, huh? it could be a ministry. If you have committed to a ministry, and if you don't come to church, you are accountable for it. Want, be what, my friend. Right? You would rather not like this couple not sell the land and give it, they would have got salvation. But they give given a vow and they pulled back some. At the same time like us, we have our ministry. You don't appear. You don't come. You are accountable. For any simple reason, you don't come for ministries. There's a vow you have given it. There's a covenant you have made. You have to serve the Lord. We have various ministries in the church and you want to commit yourself to it and you come in. If not, don't come in. This is it. That's the vow that you have made unto God. And that's a talent that you have that you want to give it unto God. But some of us are just simply playing the Lord with the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you this, my friend. If you lie to the Holy Spirit after you made a vow, this is what happens to you. Turn to the book of Matthew chapter 12, look at verse 31 and 32. Therefore I say to you, any sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven people, but blasphemy against the Spirit shall not be forgiven. Whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him, but whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it shall not be forgiven either in this age or the age to come. So that's it. Here, and Ninus choose to lie to the Holy Spirit. It's blasphemy. He choose to lie to the Holy Spirit. I'm sure the scripture tells us very much when we are about to sin, the Spirit of the Lord will begin to quench in us. In the book of uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 19 tells us, quench not the Spirit. 
The spirit who lives inside, don't quench it. Don't squeeze it. That's what he says. Right? Do not quench the spirit because the Holy Spirit inside you. It begins to convict you. Like one of the testimony of the OCCL, this person being told, a memo was given to him, by the 1st of August, all has to have this chip. If not, no entry into the office. So this Christian, he wrote this testimony and he said that, I rather choose not to have this mark of the beast and work in this company. I rather go jobless. And he took a step. And the fellow workers of his began to laugh at him. You're enjoying at this age, you won't be getting this amount of salary. And <laughs> even if you get a job elsewhere, you won't be having this amount of salary you'll be getting. You'll be getting the lowest amount. And you want to give up just for the little shit that you can put? And you stood to the ground. And I said, no, I'm going to not put anything because I know it against my Lord, my God, because my body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. I will not have anything of the peace in my body. What a strong statement, my friend. What a strong statement this man made at these dogs today. Surely the Lord will provide him. All right, but they have not come to that stage. But there will be a time that all of us, that all of us, listen, 146 countries in this world <coughs> have completely signed with a company called Motorola and with another company called Translucent. Now, Translucent company is right in New York City, and the word Translucent and Lucent is Lucifer. And these are the two companies are cooperating together bringing all these 146 countries together that no longer your credit cards, even including your identity card has got a biometric chip in it, your passport, everything will be on that little chip. You don't have to lose anything. You go to a bank, you swipe through the machine with your hand or your forehead, that's it, your account appears there. So without that you can't operate. There will be no more credit cards, plastic cards whatsoever. It has to be made into your hand or your forehead. That will be a situation that will come. And this is where Christian, you are what? You're going to make a decision. Are you going to be in Christ or are you going to be with Christ? What would be our decision? What we would, we will say, I will truly, truly bear, but I secretly was worship God. Is that what is that? God will not look for that. You want to take a stand for the Lord, you take a stand. I've learned testimony unto God. This is something that you and I, the Bible says many are called, few are chosen. There are many other ones who are living with Christ, not in Christ. Where are these people? Where are these people today? They are living in Christ. Sunday is a day of worship. Sunday is a way of worship and it's been commanded in the Ten Commandments. But we cannot follow the Word of God, the life that given you, and it says on Sunday, is nothing else but you to be in the church. Where are we? Of course, the Lord understands if you are working on some occasion days, God understands that. If you're not well, God understands that. But there are people who go according to the pleasures of their life. Just think about it. We are coming in direct collusion to the word of God and they are calling themselves Christian like these people. And Ninus and Sapphira, they began to lie to the Holy Spirit. They began to outrightly lie. And when they lied, they began to quench the spirit. And when they began to lie, what happened? You know, they are grieving the Holy Spirit. Let's turn to the book of Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. All right. The Lord's word tells us this to us, my friend. Take heart. It says to us in verse 13. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. Grieve not the Holy Spirit. You know what the word grieve? When someone dies close to you, you grieve, you cry. You go into a moment of, you know, of a mourning. You grieve. And that's the Holy Spirit is grieving inside when you compromise. When the Holy Spirit will grieve inside when you begin to take a step away from God. And this is why those people are in Christ. You have to decide. You have to take a stand. You take a stand. Surely the Lord will be with you and His favor will be with you. But if you play and lie on with God, if you begin to call about with God, the scripture is very clear about it. Friend, if you make a vow, keep to that vow. This will be my warning to you. 
and my word of caution to you. If you have put your hands on a flower of ministry, make sure you do it. If not, ask God to forgive you and get out of it. Right? This is it. There's no two way about it in the scripture. There's no two way about it. Remember the, 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 the talents gift? One was given five, and another one two, and another one one. The five said, when the master came back and said, what have you done? I made it into a ten master. He was so proud of it, so happy. Right? And then another one two, he said, Lord, I made it into four. He was so excited. You know, expressively joyful. And the one he said, Lord, I know you're a hard master. The one that you gave me, I just buried it in him. And here he was, a soiled one, and brought it back to you. And the Lord was furious. And remember the word says, throw this man out into the outer darkness where garnishing of teeth will take place. You know what that man felt? That's it. The person was given a one talent. Right? God has given all of us who are sitting here for talents. Are you developing it or not? It's a second question. You know, when the first judgment comes up, when the Lord's seven years of tribulation ends, and the Lord will come, that's called the second coming. The coming upon the clouds is not second coming. Okay? That's for rapture purposes to take his elect up there. Now, when the Lord comes in, that is the first judgment. That's the first judgment. And you know who are judged? Those who are in the Lord, who are in captivity of paradise, will be brought up. And there is a judgment. I don't have the answer for this judgment result either, because the Bible is very quiet about it. You know what? The Lord is going to judge each one of us. And do you think what He's going to ask us? Oh, let me tell you this. The Lord is not going to ask you, you have sinned. The Lord says, I buried your sin in the depth of the bottom of the sea. I'm not going to talk about your sin. As a Christian, number one, how many souls have you brought? The talent that I gave you, have you made it into two? This other two question is going to ask us. What will be our answer? Are we going to be the answer like the one in the talent be thrown out in the outer darkness? I do not know whether even those who have elected, they'll be judged, will be thrown out or not. I do not have the answer. The Bible is quiet about that. We need to make a decision. We are in the last days. Have we allowed Satan to come inside and start ruling? And we're thinking that we are still in the Lord. We are still in the Lord, still in the church. We're still doing in the ministry, in the kingdom of God. You are absolutely wrong. And I said, Sapphira, they thought, you know, by giving the whole plot of land, I solely took some money and gave it to them. They thought the church is going to be very proud of them. The church is going to be... They were deceiving the church. They were cheating the church. And now that he made him pull back some. And what happened? We're going to see the end result later. When you make a vow and you don't carry it out, what is the result? So the first thing they did was they lied to the Holy Spirit. If you are in the Spirit, let's turn to the book of Galatians. Galatians chapter 5. Verse 16. But I say, walk in the spirit and you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. Okay? The Lord here, Paul makes it very clear. Huh? If you walk by the spirit, you will not carry out of the desires of the flesh. Verse 25. If we live by the spirit, let us also walk by the spirit. If you live in the spirit, let us walk in the spirit. It's voluntary, my friend. It's voluntary that you walk in the spirit. And so this is it. We need to take account and stock of our life these days. Are you going to be the one who's going to be taken up? Or are you going to be left behind? If you're going to be left behind, you're going to face the tremendous severity of the seven years of tribulation. And I've not talked about it yet. The book of Revelation is very clearly spelled out in that. I'm going to bring it up to you. Because we are in the last days, my friend. And the Lord says, I will come like a thief. The thief will not tell you when he's going to come. He's going to come like a thief. Are you ready? Are you ready to sit? If you hear the word, well done, servant, come with me. Are we ready for that? Or are we going to burn with our Christian life? Are we contemplating everything about our walk with God? Do not be like the other three men. Of course, two have turned around. 
they had an encounter in life. Peter had an encounter in life. He saw the eyes of the Lord when, after denying him three times. And, and he went out and he wept bitterly. He cried. And that was a change in his life. A man who was feared for his own life, who cursed and sweared and said, you do not know who you are talking to. I am not the man to see with this man. Who said that? Today that he died for the Lord upside down, crucified. He was a powerful man. He was a very powerful man. He was walking with John to the temple and there was a lame man and he was asking for begging for money and he says, listen, I don't have gold or silver arms to give you but in the name of Jesus, let's rise up and walk and he walked. That was powerful. He was producing fruit. And he was standing before the powerful Sanhedrin council and he said to the people in the council who can behave him, can send him behind bars and he told them, we will not obey man but obey God statement he made a man who changed from with Christ to be in Christ so was Thomas what was the wonderful thing about Thomas he doubted he said unless I see his head unless I see his eye I'll believe when the Lord appeared he said Thomas come feel me my side he says no my Lord my God that was a turning point if not for Thomas India today would not be in Christ he came to Goa he died in Madras he was killed in Madras by the internationals. He gave his life. What an awful man they are. From with Christ, they became in Christ. And that is the life that we have been producing fruit. And here we see, and Ninus and Sapphira, that when they allowed Satan to enter into their heart to hold back some peace, their first was a light, an outright lie to the Holy Spirit. It is already a foregone conclusion that they will not be forgiven. They lied to the Holy Spirit, which we need to be absolutely careful, my friend. When Peter said, why did you lie to the Holy Spirit? When you allow Satan to begin to rule on your own self, we will go off tangent, we will begin to do senses, in the terrible sins which are not in the Lord. So we need to be aware what we have made a vow. If you made a vow, make sure you keep it. If not, don't vow. And these people, you know, all in all in goodness, if only these Ananias and Sapphira have decided not to sell the piece of property and keep for themselves, today they will be in heaven. But they are not. Fair. Because they choose to be selfish. They choose to be from self-centered. And so they decided to keep some. And next week we will see the second sin of this. When you ask the evil spirit to come or the Satan to fill our heart, one sin after another sin will be coming on the Lord. And that's what happens. And that's what happened in the lives of the Sapphira. First they lied to the Holy Spirit, completely lied, outrightly lied. Here they agreed on a corporate agreement and they went back on their word. They made a covenant together, they went back on their word and what was the consequences? That was the first consequence they lied and outrightly Peter says, why do you choose to lie to the Holy Spirit? It's a serious matter, my friend. Very serious matter that we should not lie to the Holy Spirit. Something that we need to work. As we are facing in the last days, how is our walk with the Lord? How is our walk with God in these days? Are we walking with the Lord? The fear of the Lord with us? Do we really fear Him? Do we spend time reading His words, spend time in His prayer? Sad to say, today, Christians don't even spend five time, five minutes in prayer because we are living in a busy world. We are living in a very busy world. You don't have five minutes to pray. Sad, isn't it? Very sad about Christian life and walk. If you don't connect yourself with God, He and Bounce tells this, if you get out of your house without connecting with God, he talks about prayer. All right, you, you will find the whole day you don't find the Lord is with you. So is John Banya. You don't time spend reading the word of God with him and you don't pray, you will never see him on your day. This is it. How many of us are very seriously about walking with Christ, being in Christ, that you will be a prosperous person. That's what the scriptures promised us. The scriptures have told us so much of goodness of when we are in the word of God, when we delight in the word of God. 
And let me just one word and I'll end of it. Let's all turn to the book of Joshua. The book of Joshua. Look at verse 8 of chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have... Okay, I'll read again. For then you will have your way prosperous, then you will have failure. Huh? Good here. Good success. The Bible says, when you meditate on the word of God and you do according to all that is written in it, you will, the Lord will make your way prosperous and then you will have success. That's the scripture. That's where, if you are in line with the word of God day and night, and you spend time with the word of God, I'm telling my friend, you will be prosperous, you will be successful, and surely, you will be found with the Lord when the Lord comes. 